Hello, Stone Village, and happy Wednesday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. Today's Lenten devotional is based on Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered all of his property. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed his pigs. The younger son would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, yet no one gave him anything to eat. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So the younger son set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And he ran and put his arms around his son and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to one of his servants, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put a, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate, for the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they, they began to celebrate. Now the older son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his father's servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, Your brother has come and your father has killed the calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the older son became angry and he refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all of these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. And yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the calf for him. Then the father said to his son, Son, you will always have me with you, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> In most devotionals, sermons, and teachings about today's parable, <clears throat> the lesson is almost always, do not be like the younger son. <laughs> do not be like him. But in truth, more often than not, most of us are like the younger son. We are. Recklessly wasting God's grace. However, fortunately for us, God's love is without condition, no matter what. Now, unfortunately, most teachings on today's lesson portray the younger son as the bad one and completely ignore the older son. And yet both of them, I believe, are equally not great not great. And both share fault. So as I see it, this is a parable of two lost sons. Least we forget, the older son also distances himself from his father just as much as the younger son. 
I mean, consider these parables, or I'm sorry, parallels, not parables, parallels. Both sons, in a sense, run away. And the father has to leave his home and go out to welcome both sons back, inviting both to the feast. The younger son intends to say, treat me like one of your hired hands. The older one says, I have worked for you like a slave. The father has to overcome the image both sons have of themselves as servants, rather than children and heirs. In the parable, both sons distance themselves from each other and their father. The younger son runs away to a distant country. The older son runs away emotionally. And he says, that son of yours. And the father has to correct him, <laughs> this brother of yours. The younger son is motivated by hunger to return home to his father, not his father's love. The older son also doesn't seem to want his father's love. As he complains, you didn't give me even so much as a small goat. Neither of the sons seem to want their father's love. They just want his stuff. Which does lead me to wonder how much of your faith, my faith, is about wanting stuff from God more than God's unconditional love. Fun fact, the word prodigal does not mean disobedient, but recklessly extravagant, recklessly extravagant. The younger son wasted his inheritance in extravagance, but so did his older brother. You see, even though the older brother has everything his father has, the father's generosity is wasted on a resentful, self-centered son who dismisses his father's generosity because he believes he's deserving of more. And so on one level, today's story is not about how we should be like one son and not the other. <laughs> Honestly, don't be like either son. On another level, today's story is about truly unconditional love. And final level, I believe today's story is an invitation to be like the Father, extravagantly generous with love, with forgiveness, and with mercy. Which leads me to wonder, what will you do with the invitation? will it lead you to reflect, perhaps considering how you might be more extravagant in generosity? Then again, will it support you in becoming more merciful and forgiving towards other and perhaps even yourself? And finally, will it inspire you to lean into the image of your creator living as a reflection of the one who loves you without condition. I wonder. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you, and I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God so those to whom love is a stranger will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you, stoners. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.